What's up, Cal Gang? We have the stacks from today. The goal is to find the moment of inertia of this, uh, this area around the y-axis. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing when you're finding moment of inertia, maybe center of mass, is to try to take advantage of symmetry. So what we're going to notice is that we have this kind of symmetrical figure across the y-axis, and that's going to make things a lot easier. So let's just go ahead and get started uh, with this. So we got this complex shape. You want to break it down into a simple shape before you go ahead and try to move on. So we're going to break it down into three shapes and then try to figure out uh, the moment of inertia for each one of them, and then we're just going to add them all up at the end. So to do that, let's break it up into these three shapes. So let's break it up into these three rectangles. And let's label this rectangle one, rectangle two, and rectangle three. So now we need to find the moment of inertia for each one of these. And the equation we're gonna be using is the moment of inertia around the y-axis is equal to the moment of inertia around the y-axis uh, of like the shape plus area, distance, and the x squared. So distance x squared is the distance from the, the axis that we're rotating around to the center of mass of that shape. But like I said, we're symmetrical across the y-axis, which means that the, the center of mass for each one of these, one, two, and three, lies on this, the axis that we're rotating around, which makes distance of x equal to zero. And if distance x is equal to zero, then all we have to concern ourselves with this. So let's go ahead and do that. So i y bar, or i bar y, is equal to for a rectangle, this is different for shapes, and you need to find that in the back of your book, but it's going to be 1, 12, uh, height, base, cubed. So this is basically the equation we're going to use to find each one of these. So let's go ahead and find it for 1, 2, and 3. So I bar y, 1. So this is the top shape. What we're going to notice is this around the y-axis is going to be the same as 3 around the y-axis. So we can say this is equal to I bar y of 3. And let's do it. So it's 1, 12. Height times base, so its height is 50, and then its base is 200, and we got to cube that 200 because that's just the equation there. So then we're going to find that this number is equal to 33.3 times 10 to the sixth millimeters to the fourth. Okay, so we figured out like two thirds of the problem already. So let's do the next part. So the moment of inertia around the y-axis for two, this long beam. It's going to be 112. Its base, or its height, is 300. Then its base is 50. So make sure to cube that 50. It's just going to be that equation right there. And this is equal to 3,125,000 3, uh, millimeters to the fourth. So then simply all we have to do is add these up, right? So i of y is equal to i y of 1 plus i y of 2 plus i y of 3 where i, y of 1 and i, y of 3 are both this number, and i, y of 2 is this number. So you add those up, it's going to be 6 point, or 69.8 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4th. And that's your final answer. So it's really as simple as that, right? It's, uh, just not overthinking the problem. Some of these problems are easier than others, so check out my channel for more complicated problems using moment of inertia. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.